Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some bullish stories with a twist. First up, Bitcoin could hit $1 million, says the CEO of CoinFund. We're going to take a look at what he's talking about and how that might be a little bit out there. Also, billionaires are essentially FOMOing into Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at why that actually is and a little piece from Bloomberg Opinion, which tells you to stay away from Bitcoin and why I think they're not too far off. And lastly, I need to answer the question, which is the elephant in the room is, am I still dollar cost averaging or DCAing as the price of Bitcoin goes to all time highs or is there a new strategy? And we'll get into all that and take a look at the markets, but first we gotta do some giveaways. 12 days of Christmas are upon us, thankfully great stuff. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Alex Maschioli for taking over the channel for a little bit. We had talked about this a little bit ago just to see if we could uh, pull it off. And it's it's uh, nice to switch things up. And uh, maybe in another year or so, I'll do another thing. <laughs> I'm not really uh, big on switching too many things up. But I thought it was appropriate, especially for the holiday time. So hope you enjoyed it. I liked Alex's perspective as far as the institutions, because he talks to all those people and I don't. So it's just interesting to hear just another viewpoint from the thousand bird's eye view. Anyhow, so Alex was talking about today about giving away a Trade the Chain membership. And the thing about Trade the Chain is, to me, it's like the trifecta. You got the, the FA, TA, and SA. Well, what the heck is that? Well, the FA is a fundamental analysis. That's kind of what we do here. We talk about the stories that are going on, what's going on in the world of cryptocurrency, the news, and of course, all the hype. The TA is, of course, the technical analysis, which I don't get too much into, but the geniuses over there at Market Rebellion talk about it, and it makes a lot of sense, and they use both. And Alex here has brought us in the third perspective, and that is the sentiment analysis. Analysis. And that kind of takes a look at what is really going on behind the scenes, the social media, the hype, the tweets, the blog posts, all those little details that really, in my opinion, is what is being a big factor for this entire market. I believe it's emotion. Me and Alex are on the same wavelength, and that's why I created Trade the Chain. So we're going to give away a free membership today. So let's just jump right over into the video that Alex did. And I'll do this quite easily. All I'm going to do is I'm going to swing down a couple of swipes and then bop, stop. David Wolber, congratulations. You have just won a free Trade the Chain membership. And let me swing down a couple more times. Bop, 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 stop. And Martin Safi. Congratulations, you are our second winner for Trade the Chain. So David and Martin, if you could just do me a favor, go over to danteachescrypto.com, click on the contact tab right there, fill out the form, uh, which is just a contact form, and we will send over, actually Alex will send over, your free membership to Trade the Chain. All right, let's jump into today's markets. So what we got? Well, we got uh, Bitcoin almost hitting 24,000. That's what happened. It, it's gone down a little bit. Uh, we're at 22.6, but phew, fantastic run, but there has to be a little bit of a pullback. And I know everybody's saying, but this is different. It's going to keep going. No, it's not. It's not. It does not go all the way up all the time. So we, we hit 21 and then 22. And I was monitoring my Twitter account as I usually do. And it was just like, oh, we're going 25, we're going 27, 30,000, 50,000 by the end of the year. I'm like, whoa, 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 slow your roll. It's not this game is played. I don't see 50,000 in play by the end of the year. I could be wrong. But uh, here we are with a little bit of pullback, even though it is up 8%. But again, fantastic run. Won't take anything away from it. This is great news for all of us. Ethereum at 644. Wow, that's pretty good. 13% uh, for the week. XRP, watch out. A whole whopping 60 cents. Wow. Tether, Litecoin, 13%. Bitcoin Cash. You know what? What's down? Cardano? Pfft, Cardano's down for some reason. All right, sure. Binance Coin. All right. 0 0.4. I mean, not much. That's a stable coin. No, whatever. And uh, yeah, pretty much it. So pretty good run thus far. Let's see what happens throughout the week. Now let's take a look at if we had just invested into Bitcoin, if I switch over to Bitcoin, that's pretty simple. And let's see if, uh, if we just would have invested into the King Crypto, how we would have done. Well, with XRP, we would have actually uh, been down. We should have invested in XRP and but up a whopping 5%. 3.8 for Litecoin and uh, uh, yeah, that's about it. So. That's the big thing. Uh, a lot of times when you just invest in Bitcoin, it's great and uh, you know things go up. However, there's been chatter of the altcoin season. When is that going to come? I have no idea. And nobody really does. They can give you a lot of good guesses, but I don't know. But this is exactly what happened in 2017. Bitcoin popped off first and then boom, off we went for the altcoins. Now, do I think we are in the parabolic bull run like when we did in uh, December 2017? No, I do not. 
I think 2021 is going to be the real fireworks. This is just a warm up. So everybody just calm down. This isn't the first rodeo. Let's see where it all goes. But let's jump into today's top story. So this is a good quick follow-up piece from Bloomberg Technology. Uh, they had on the uh, CEO of CoinFund. And CoinFund, if you don't know, it's a uh, blockchain technology investment fund. It uh, started around 2015 in Brooklyn, New York. And they invest in veteran liquid opportunities within the blockchain sector. Great. So we know where their legion lies. And what they're going to talk about was the, the actual CIO of Guggenheim, which we had covered yesterday, where uh, this was uh, Scott Minard. He had talked about how Bitcoin was going to go to 400000 That's what they believed. And on top of that, they have been investing into Bitcoin since it was at 10000 which is always interesting to me. All these industries are like, oh, yeah, now we're into it. Well, where were you before, guys, when uh, everything was going down? Oh, we were buying it when you suckers were selling. <laughs> That's what I think is really going on. So yeah, it, was, it was a good piece, a good information. So it just kind of reinstills the fact that institutions are here. But what Gens is saying is that he's going to shock the world right now with a little prediction. So I want you to take a listen to it. And before I even play it, I'm just going to say, take this with a grain of salt. And we're going to go over this in detail in a little bit. So just take a listen. Well, Seth, I mean, you talk about the big money managers. One of the biggest out there is, of course, Guggenheim. And they've been putting mm -hmm. through the desire to be able to buy crypto into some of their funds. We actually spoke with Scott Minard earlier, all to do with the Federal Reserve. But he came out with this eye-watering, eye-popping sort of viewpoint on where crypto is going. Just take a listen. Uh, we made the decision to start allocating toward Bitcoin. Uh, when Bitcoin was at 10,000, um, it's, it's a little more challenging uh, with the current price closer to 20,000. Uh, amazing, you know, over a very short period of time how big of a run-up we've had. Um, but having said that, uh, our, our fundamental work shows that Bitcoin uh, should be worth about $400,000. Like, uh, yeah, t talk to us about that 400,000 figure. How quickly does he get there, Seth? Well, you, you know, the way we're thinking about it, and, and my involvement in Bitcoin started in 2012 and, and CoinFund was founded in 2015, the, the way we're thinking about it is if you look at kind of the, the pattern recognition of Bitcoin's four-year cycles, 150 to 250,000 looks like the base case. But here's the thing. It's becoming an institutional asset class this cycle. And that strikes me as being analogous to, you know, my background is in equities. When Tesla stepped up from the $25 to $35 range up to $150 to $350, and then it consolidated for a while, I think we could actually pull forward the next cycle, mm. see Bitcoin go to $500,000 to a million, and then probably consolidate wow. for a few years in that range. Yeah. But, but I think we could actually get there in the 21, 22 time frame. First, I'm going to ask you a question. If we went to 150,000, would anybody be upset? Would you be upset if Bitcoin had 150,000 in 2021 or 2022? Would you be upset if it had 100,000 and altcoins also followed it? I wouldn't. I don't think I'd have a problem with that whatsoever. So what I'm going to say next, um, take that also with a grain of salt. But you have to understand there's a reason why a lot of people who are so heavy into Bitcoin are giving these price predictions. First of all, it's because they have a lot of it. So when you have a lot of an asset, you want that asset to do good because you are invested into it, whether that be emotionally, financially, or both. So with Gin here, he's going to talk about how he can definitely see it. Well, of course he could probably see it because he got a ton of it. There is no difference between this gentleman right here and when you see a bunch of the gold bugs going, you know what? Gold can do pretty well. It's can do pretty great because, again, they have a lot of it. Now, the technical is a little bit different. I think Bitcoin is far superior to gold in a lot of different aspects. Portability being, portability being one of them. Decentralized being the second. Also, it's programmable money. I can go on and on. It doesn't matter. But yes, but you have to understand this is what is going on. So when you hear these types of predictions, do not start to think like, oh, it's going to a million. It's going to a million. Calm down. Take a step back. I'm going to take you down memory lane real quick. Follow me. So I'm going to start off with the biggest scammer of all. And his name is John McAfee. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, John was the one is why I pretty much got into cryptocurrency. Because I got in around October, November 2017. And I heard this prediction. I'm like, wow, John McAfee, I know that guy. He's a great guy. He makes that great software. Fantastic. And he's thinking a million. He's a smart guy. I'll follow him. Well, guess what? He never believed it. And he was a big shill and everything else. Now he's in jail somewhere, awaiting arraignment. I don't know. 
So he made these predictions probably because he had a lot of Bitcoin. And then also he got into a lot of different other business dealings with other cryptocurrencies and took a lot of money from them. And then all of a sudden those cryptocurrencies were awesome. That's just the start. Also, here's another great price prediction. This is from Pomp. I like Pomp. I like his show. I watch his show. He gives predictions. Why does he give predictions? Probably because he looks at fundamentals and a lot of different factors. And he's not a god. No one's a god. No one can really just pull out these numbers out of thin air and be like, this is definitely what it's going to be because no one's got a crystal ball. So here was his price prediction in 2019. Bitcoin will hit 100 grand. ETH will hit 3,000. Litecoin 2,500. And XRP will hit 10. That didn't happen. So as a matter of fact, Ethereum hit a 140, Litecoin is 44, and the price of XRP was just about 20 cents. And I could use my favorite joke, XRP is pay the quarter. <laughs> Can't use that, which sucks. Now let's move forward. Here's some great predictions in 2020. Timothy Peterson, manager of Cane Island Alternative, he said that 75,000 would be happening relatively soon. And this was on June 8th. Of course, it didn't do that. It actually went down to $9,100. Moving down, I don't know who the other guy is. I don't care. Thomas Lee. This guy is a huge Bitcoin bull, invests a lot into it. He said that Bitcoin will see almost a 200% gain on February 5th because of a break of the 200 moving average. And guess what happened? It didn't go up, it went down by 40%. Of course, this is in March, and these are the things that happened, especially with the everything that happened globally. And then he had a prediction before that, which said that it would be 91,000 by March of 2020, and that didn't happen. So when I hear these types of predictions, I want to be wrong. I want it to go to a million. Believe me, I want, I mean, why wouldn't I want, I want it to go to a million dollars, but I've been around long enough to where I've seen, I've heard a lot of predictions and some come true and some don't. And I just take a look back at history because I need to know where I'm going. If I want to know where I'm going, I got to know where I've been and that's where I've been. So to take a little bit deeper dive into that, let's jump forward. All right, this is the Bloomberg opinion. It says all aboard the billionaires Bitcoin bandwagon. And we've seen these billionaires come out of the woodwork. We just talked about, Alex just talked about one today. And now we know that other, other big entities have been investing into Bitcoin a long time ago. Guggenheim being one of them, who was buying up Bitcoin at $10,000. So this is a nice little piece where it talks about the super rich can afford to dabble in crypto. Mere financial mortals, not so much. So there's two sides of this story, and I'm not going to get into any of it, really. Not in this piece. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I just want to go over this first paragraph. It says, now that Bitcoin has topped 20 grand for the first time, should you shift your hard-earned cash into digital currencies? History suggests caution should be your watchword, no matter how strong the fear of missing out may be. And it goes over some different pieces, and some are just kind of ridiculous. So let's just break into what we know and the charts. I'm not a big TA person, as you may have known, but uh, I do like to look back at the past. And one of the patterns that I definitely see is this. Having, all-time high, dip, space. Having, all-time high, dip, space. Having, 2020, all-time high, 2021. Dip, 2022. Space, or a rebound, 2023. And it starts the whole process over and over and over again. So let me break that down and tell you exactly what I'm going to do as far as my dollar cost averaging, because there is a point where I'm going to have to stop. This is the conservative Bitcoin price prediction. I just took a look at the first, second, and third halvings, and the price increased on each one. So the first halving was in November 2012, and then when it reached its all-time high, it was December 2013, so about a year. The day of the halving was November 2012, and it was 12 bucks. A year later, it was $1,000. That is an increase by about 8,000%. All makes sense so far. Great. The second halving happened in July 2016. It hit its all-time high about a year and a half later on December 2017. So when it was actually a halving, it was $650, bucks, and it went up to $20,000, which was on December 2017. So there's two ways to look at it. The percentage increase, it was 8,000%, then it went down to 3,000%. So about two-thirds actually it went down, or a third of this, a third of 8,000 roughly is around 2,900. Another way to look at it is the all-time high was about 1,000, then it went up to 20,000, that's about 20x. Now the third halving, that just happened in May 2020. When's the next all-time high? I have no idea, but I'm guessing maybe 2022, maybe 2021, not for sure. But if we take a look at this, one year to a year and a half to two years, that could possibly what it be what it is. What was the price of the halving? $10,000. So we want to look at increases, 8,000 to 3,000, decrease this by about two thirds, you're gonna, about, you're gonna get about 1,000%. So at 10,000 times 1,000%, you get about $100,000. 
my this is why I give my prediction of 150,000 because I just want to be right in the middle. About 150,000 is where I see the next all-time high. And that's a very conservative number. Now let's do this. I call this one the Draper. Draper thinks it's going to be around 250 to 300,000, somewhere around there. So the same numbers are, are true. The only difference is that instead of decreasing by about two thirds or a third from you know 8,000 to 3,000, it's still the same. But let's say we went from 3,000 and we shot up by about a third to a half. We'd get about a 4,500% increase. If the numbers are 10,000 times 4,500% increase, we get around 450,000, 400, 450,000. That's where Draper's somewhere around there. Okay. Then if we go off on the deep end, I call this the uh, McAfee, which is just crazy, I think. You get this, this, and then, or the one way, you go the opposite way. You get 10,000%, 10,000 times 10,000%, a million dollars. And these are all numbers. They're like, well, no big deal. Let's just hit to a million. Not a thing. Well, wait. Here's the market cap calculator. Let's just break this down. The circling supply is about 18.5. I think it's actually much lower than that because people have thrown away their Bitcoin, but whatever. They're always going to stick to 18.5. Maybe in a year it's going to be 19 million. Not for sure because they're going to mine some more Bitcoin. Sure, let's just take stick with 18.5 to make things nice and easy. So if we get 100,000, that means the market cap is almost 2 trillion. I can see 2 trillion. Makes sense, right? How about 150,000? We're looking at almost 3 trillion. 3 trillion? Okay. We're kind of pushing some edges, but I'm sure we can do it. We almost hit a trillion last time. I'm sure we could triple that. Now I want to show you the Draper. Let's do 450,000. You're looking at $8.3 trillion. Could we do that? I don't know, maybe. But I will just say, tell you this, the total supply of gold, which has been around for thousands of years, is about 11 to 12 trillion. So we would be three quarters of everything that's in, in gold right now. Okay, maybe. So let's go for a million. Let's just see what happens here. You're looking at all at 18 and a half trillion dollars. So you've almost doubled the amount of gold. You've got some other things, maybe in derivatives. You maybe have gobbled up some real estate and tokenized something else. You've done a lot of things and you put a lot of money into it. Could this happen? I, I don't see it. I just don't see it. And uh, maybe it could. I don't see it in this cycle. But I will tell you this. Bitcoin will do extremely well. I know it. I feel it. I've been talking about it for the last year on this channel. Do I see it's going to go up that much? I hope it does but I just don't see it right now, especially not in a year or less. This leads me to my very last point, dollar cost averaging. And I got this question a lot because my one of my price points was 19.9 for Bitcoin to uh, you know sell off just a little bit and take some profits. And the question was, well, are you gonna dollar cost average because you're taking profits? So what's, what's the point of that? Really comes down to this. What is the price point of where Bitcoin will retract to? That's the big question. So again, we have to look at the past. So the first halving was in 2012. This was the all-time high a year later. What I wanna know is what was this low point from the actual high point between the first and second halving? Meaning, we know it was around $1,000, right? It was $1,000, 994 on 2013, which is right around here, 1,000 bucks. What was the low point right here? Well, to do that, I need to find out all the times and all the dates between 2013 and 2016, between the first and second halving, or 2012 and 2016, because I need to find this low point right here to see what that number is. So here we are. I'll take this graph. The very lowest point that I can see, this is 210, this is 172. Let's work with round numbers. Let's say about 200 bucks. So I went from $1,000 to the high, and it dropped down to almost $200 in January 2015. That is 20% of the all-time high. So what happened after here, after the second halving? Going back, it was $20,000. I need to find out from the all-time high, which is right around, well, which was December 2017, what was the lowest point between then and now? Because I want to find how much it dipped from the all-time high. Just bring up CoinGecko again. Here it is from 2017 all the way to today. The lowest point that I can see, I thought it was actually in March at $5,300, but it wasn't. We have to go all the way back over here. It was $3,378. Let's work with round numbers. Let's say it's around $4,000. Let's just round up, which is a heck of a roundup, let's be honest. But let's say 4,000. It was at 20,000, went down to 4,000. What is that? 20%. So just like the first episode, we went from 1,000 to $200, that's 20%. The next episode went from 20,000 to 4,000, that's 20%. What's going to happen in the future? I don't know, but I have to take a look at the past and go, well, if we had 150,000, what is 20% of 150,000? $30,000. I believe 
and I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I believe after $30,000, I'm going to stop dollar cost averaging because after that, it's going to go all the way up and come all the way back down. So right now, I'm still going to be dollar cost averaging. I'm putting a little bit less into Bitcoin because I think it's still going to be a little bit more of a correction. But past $30,000, I cannot put anything in until it drives all the way up to $150,000, somewhere around there. And I believe it'll go all the way back to $30,000 based on the history. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I'll be okay with that because I've been doing the hard work just like you've been doing the hard work. Over this whole time, from all the way here, all the way to here, me and you have been doing dollar cost averaging, especially if you listen to this channel. That's all I talk about. I've been putting in money just little bits here and not just on Bitcoin, everything in my portfolio from this for this and this and this and this, even here and even here. It was hard. It wasn't easy, but you got to be disciplined. And after I was done, I was like, did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing? I think I did. I know I did. And here we are. So, all right. So look, I know that's a bit long. I apologize, but I think a lot of those questions needed to be answered. I just wanted you to be careful. That's all. Again, take predictions with a grain of salt. Nobody's got a crystal ball, but uh, I think we all know where this is going. There's a lot of institutional players in there. Uh, we know that they are going to help us stabilize uh, the price point because they're not going anywhere. If they have the same philosophy as Michael Saylor, they're not selling. They're just accumulating. So we'll see what happens. I think You'll see some pullbacks, you'll see some FUD, you'll see some bad news. But again, 2021, I don't think we can lose here. I think it's going to be fireworks. All right, so that's it. So thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure, let uh, YouTube do its magic. And uh, that's all she wrote. So thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.